perfect. What up, y'all? It's just Tasha. People, y'all can call me Tasha. If you are new to this channel and you like what you see, please hit the like button. Please. Whatever. Subscribe button. Comment down below and join my live streams. Probably going live tonight. I had to say it because I used to say that all the time. Today, I have some lettuce wraps, y'all. Asian lettuce wraps. Fallon made these. And what what inspired her to make them? What was it? When we went um to that bar? Okay, we went to some bar and I don't know the last wraps are really good, so she wanted to make some. Also, you guys, we have a couple's channel it's called Tosh X Foul. The link will be in the description below. I also want to mention we got Simply Food by TY's book today. I'm not gonna open it up. Or show the address. But we got his book today. If you guys want to get his cookbook, go get his cookbook, Cultural Mosaic. Because Fallon made something. Oh, chicken and dumplings yesterday was so good. Okay, let me get to the food. All right. Anything else? I got a TikTok. Can y'all please join my TikTok? I'm trying to get to 10,000. Fallon has a TikTok too. All that is going to be somewhere. Now, I'm just going to make my little letter short. You put as much, but the more you put, you know, the fuller it's going to be. Your whole yeah, that's fine. All right, I got some of this, y'all. Put this on her. Oh, I gotta do a thumbnail. I'm excited about this. I think I've had a lettuce wrap, chicken lettuce wrap a couple times in my life. Ooh. Here it is. Oh. Mm. I don't know how to eat it. Like that? Put some of the hot stuff on it? Oh, mm, it's good. <clears throat> mm. What else looks like? To eat that? Mm -hmm. Unless you just want to use your finger. Mm -mm. I use too much meat almost, but <laughs> oh my God. It's so good, baby. You like it? Mm-hmm. 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 You look like a little I'm upset in my eyes. <clears throat> oh, yeah. That's good. Mm. Oh, I'm going to tell y'all, I was watching this show called um, Text Me When You Get Home. It's like a version of 2020 or the whole premise is people who have been, something has been done to them. Something, some crime has been committed against them and their cell phone is what basically helps. So I only watched one episode, so I'm not, that's why I'm like pausing because I don't really, I'm not a hundred percent, but their cell phone is what either saved them or got them in trouble or whatever the case. It has something to do with a cell phone, with texting, right? So I'm gonna tell you guys a little, one of the episodes that I watched a couple days ago, I think it was yesterday. Now, y'all know I have to write things down in order to tell a full story because I want to give you guys the correct info. Even when I write things down, I write them down the way my brain works at times. So I might still write something down from the end of an episode and put it, on the top of the page and i'm not sure why i do that but that gets done those of you who know me already know this that was just a disclaimer for the new people Whew. oh but you guys that were wondering today i had oh i didn't mean to do that oh well Remember the interview that I had before? Anyway, I got, I got, I went to the interview today and I'll probably get the job. It looks like I am. So, yay. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. Here I go. This is great, low carb. Which sweet did you put in here, baby? What? Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Poison. It's poison. It's honey. Mm. And the mm. my ploy or whatever it's called. Make ploy. Or my, I don't know. Okay. Well, it's delicious. It has a nice spice to it, too. Y'all gotta go try her recipe. If you like spicy, but not too spicy, you might be able to handle this. I just put red pepper and chili flakes. Yeah. It's mm. good. Oh, this too. I was saying you're using it. Yeah, this is probably it. All right, y'all, I'm about to tell y'all a story in a second. I guess I'll give y'all a little backdrop, backdrop, backstory. There's this couple. I don't remember his name, but the mom's name is Sheraton, like the Sheraton Hotel. I think his name is Brian. They end up having a getting divorced, but it's amicable. They have three kids. Three daughters. Dad takes two. Mom takes one. Mom takes the middle kid. Dad said, now... This is like a documentary type thing. And um, the setting is the interviewers are talking to the parents about what happened. And it's going back and forth between each parent, you know, telling stories. They're in separate places and going back and forth between also maybe a detective or whoever was involved in the crime. Not the perpetrator, of course, but everybody else. So <clears throat> the... Middle child, her name is. Well, let me start over. What's the little bit, girl name? Cameron. Okay. The middle child, Cameron, she's 10 years old. She's very active. She's in gymnastics, loves gymnastics. And of course, so she's there often. Her mom drops her off and then goes about her business. She trusts everybody there. I don't know how long Cameron was in gymnastics at the time of the incident, but. Anyway, she's in there, right? They got video of her doing whatever she's doing. Okay. I'm going to eat first. Oh, look. And what I wrote down to you guys, which I didn't know, but it's a statistic. 200,000 women go missing every year in the U.S., and so that means right now somebody just went missing. And many of them don't survive. Okay, this is in Lancaster, Texas. And so the 10 year old girl, wait. Okay, so the facility that she went to was called Liberty Gymnastics and it was 20 minutes away from her house. That's why her mom was comfortable leaving her because she had been there for a while, but she doesn't say how long. And, you know, she probably didn't want to sit there and wait for her daughter to do the little whatever she had to do. What's wrong, baby? It's not me, is it? Oh, okay. I'm like, am I in trouble? I don't want to be in trouble. <laughs> okay. Okay, so this day, mom got a phone call and said from the gymnastics, telling her there was a mysterious man that was in their parking lot, that had been in their parking lot or whatever. Nobody was in it. He hadn't moved or whatever. And I, they wanted to let all of the parents know. They also called the dad and told him as well. Cool, so now we know. 
There's a mysterious van. I've been in the parking lot for two days or something. Now, the mom, Sheraton, she had a torn ligament in her arm, so she wasn't able to drive her daughter to, to gymnastics one day. She ended up having her ex-husband's, she ended up having her mother-in-law take her daughter. So she dropped the daughter off 9 a.m. to gymnastics. And around 11.30, mom gets a phone call stating that we have your daughter and we want some money. <clears throat> she was woken up out of her sleep. So she's like, what? What are you talking about? Like, who are you? He was like, shut up. She hears her daughter scream in the background and say, mommy, help me or something. And that was it. And then he was like, take her to the back. That was that. So what I write. Oh, so he, the, the guy ends up telling her, this is about a kidnapping. I've kidnapped your daughter and I want your money, basically. So he tells her, do not hang up the phone. You have to stay on the phone with me the whole time. If you hang up the phone, I'm, I'm going to get rid of her. So she's like, all right, I got to stay on the phone. Don't call the police. Don't tell anybody. Don't do this. Don't do that. She's at home, right? So she ends up going to her landline. She has a landline at home and calls her ex-husband while he's at work. He The first phone call, he ignored because he was at work. Then she called right back. Excuse me. So he answered. When he answered, you know, she couldn't say anything because she's on her cell phone. So she's putting the landline uh, against the cell phone speaker so he could hear what the guy is saying. But mind you, the guy's first language is not English. So what he's saying, it's not really registering. That's like somebody calling me and then putting the phone to a phone. I'm going to be kind of confused, right? He thought that it was maybe somebody that she was dating and he thought like it was an accident or something. So I think he ended up hanging up eventually. He didn't know what was going on. He just left it alone. Oh, and then she ended up saying they took Cameron. I think he still ended up not understanding. So eventually he, she texted him. But because her arm was messed up, she didn't text him the right words, but he was able to read between the lines. They text, they kidnapped our daughter. The guy makes her go to the ATM. He tells her where ATM to go to. So obviously he's been staking her out. Knows where she lives. He said, I know where you live. I know where you are. And you know, he was like, do you want me to cut one of her limbs off? I mean, just the same. He kind of sounded ridiculous, right? So, I think I'm eating them all. I've eaten, I only have two left. I'm finished after this. After it's all gone. So, let me see. He tells her to shut up and listen. She has no idea who this person is. He asks her if she, he should cut out, okay. Kidnapper tells her not to hang up or call the police. She calls her ex-husband. Okay, I got all that. Oh, and then I think I'll, the rest of it, I got to tell y'all off the top of my head. So she ends up going to the ATM. She only had $125, but she told him, hey, maybe I can give you $5,000. Before she went to the bank, she told him this. And then she went to the bank and realized that she only had, she can only get $125 out. So she gets that. He makes her go to a check cashing spot, but he makes her go to a specific check cashing place. She wants to tell them, but she said when she gets in there, they're looking at her kind of funny and hold on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That was delicious, y'all. So when she gets in the check casting spot, everybody looking at her funny and she realized that they were in on it. 
Because why are you sending me to a specific check cashing spot? Why are you, why are these people looking at me? It's $125. And he's, you know, telling her to wire him to 125. So anyway, she does. She wires him to 125. And then when he, when she leaves, he's like, that's not enough money. You got to get some other money. Don't somebody else care about her? You need to get some other money from somebody else. Get some money for your mother-in-law, whatever. She ends up going to her mother-in-law's house. Now, it's her ex-mother-in-law, but still. Her children's grandma. She went to her house and she told... She still had the phone in her hand, mind you. So she can't say too much. She's like, you know, can I borrow some money? I fell off some hard times. I need to borrow some money. I need to borrow some money, whatever. I need it right now. She was like, no, nah, I ain't got it. So she leaves and she's like, you know, oh, well, she doesn't have it. She's crying. Her phone ends up dying. No, the service went out. And so she's freaking out. He ends up calling her back. And she's trying to figure out a way that she's going to give him some money because he's threatening to get rid of her daughter. Her ex-husband, while she's on the phone with him, her ex-husband texts her and says, do you remember where our first house was? And she's like, yeah, but why? And he's like, do you remember? And she's like, yeah. He was like, go there, meet me there. So he ended up meeting her there. He said he told her this because he just felt like she was frantic. She wouldn't talk to him. She wouldn't answer the phone because she wouldn't answer his phone calls because she couldn't, you know, she couldn't click over. So he gets her to the house and he runs up to the door and she's scared because she, she sees this car like zooming by, but it's him, him, you know, pulls up and it's him. And she's like, what? Y'all. He was like, get out the car, get out the car. She's like, what? You know, I'm trying to save our daughter. This dude, like, our daughter is fine. She said, no, he, they're going to, he said, our daughter is at the gym. She was at the gym the whole time. She never wasn't at the gym. So this is a new scam. People are virtually kidnapping people. I don't know how they got the voice, but they, I, maybe it's AI. Because I don't know how they got the voice to sound like the little girl's voice. But all they have to do is look you up, find out where you are. You posting on social media, posting where your kids go to school. Y'all already know you're not supposed to be doing that. Because it's easy for somebody to go up to the kid, be like, hey, JR, come here. JR probably not going to go, but Brian might. So, um, yeah. They virtually kidnapping y'all, so don't believe them. If your kid, they, if they say your kid is missing... Call the school at the very least. Call the school and see if your kid is at the school because they might be there. Anyway, that's the story. I'm glad it didn't end up being a sad story. I mean, no one likes to get scammed. But I'd rather get scammed than have my child or anybody, you know, kidnapped. I love y'all. See y'all later.